Hello zoology people! Today I want to talk to you about the order Mammalia, the mammals. So we are called mammals because we have mammary glands. So all mammals produce milk for their young. We also all have fur. So mammal characteristics are mammary glands and fur. The fur is used for warmth. In some species though, like humans, the hair is vestigial. So it no longer is used to keep us warm. Let's talk about some other mammal characteristics. We have four chambered hearts. We have amazing circulatory systems that help produce oxygen for our entire body, which gives us more endurance than most other types of animals. A really interesting feature about mammal blood is that there's no nucleus in mammal blood. All other animals have a nucleus in their blood, but mammals do not. So why is that a benefit? Well, cells are squishy. You can squish a cell, but you can't squish a nucleus. So by not having a nucleus in our blood, our blood can squish very skinny to get through the tiniest capillaries. That means that we can get blood to the smallest parts of our body, oxygenating our whole body. This is why humans can run marathons. It's because we have an excellent circulatory system that can give us endurance for those types of activities. I mentioned in my reptile video that reptiles, their jaw is in three bones. And so this helps snakes dislocate their jaw so they can eat food whole. But with mammals, we only have one jaw bone and the other two pieces have moved and become our ear bones. So through evolution, we evolved having ear bones and those ear bones vibrate at the slightest sounds, which gives mammals incredible hearing. This is why you have bats that can use sonar and dolphins and whales that can use sonar. Those ear bones give us some of the best hearing in the animal kingdom. Now there are other animals that have excellent hearing like owls, but their skull shape is like satellites that help project that sound. And so they don't have those little ear bones like mammals do. Mammals are endothermic, meaning that we're warm blooded, so we have to eat a lot, we have high metabolisms, but these features have also given us access to the entire planet. There are mammals on every part of this planet, from the coldest part to the hottest part, mammals have conquered the land because of these features. Mammals also have every type of tooth that you can think of in the animal kingdom. We have mammals that are fruitivores, mammals that are herbivores, mammals that are just vegetarians, mammals that are omnivores, mammals that are carnivores, detritivores, insectivores. We have mammals that eat every single type of food that could be eaten by an animal. And this is all due to the different various types of teeth that mammals have. So for this video, I wanna break mammals up into three groups. I want to talk about the monotremes, the marsupials, and the placental mammals. And so they're also in suborders and infraclasses and infraorders, but I'm just going to call them monotremes, marsupials, and placentals. And so let's start with the oldest and simplest, the monotremes. The monotremes are the mammals that lay eggs. And yes, we still have some mammals that lay eggs. They are all in Australia. There are five species, but they're really just two groups. There is the platypus and there's the echidna. So the platypus and the echidna, these are monotremes. The platypus is a mammal that lays eggs and the echidna is a mammal that lays eggs. They both feed their babies milk, they lay the egg, the egg hatches, and then they nurse and take care of the baby like any other mammal would. But they are monotremes laying eggs. And this is very rare because most monotremes went extinct, but Australia still has the platypus and the echidna. Next, we have marsupials. Most marsupials are in Australia, but we do have marsupials elsewhere. For example, I live in the United States. The United States does have one marsupial, the possum. The possum is a marsupial. So let's talk about what makes a marsupial a marsupial. Well, marsupials are also a very ancient mammal. They're not as old as the monotremes, but what marsupials do is they give live birth, but they give live birth to a fetus that is not fully developed. So they give birth to a fetus that is still growing. It is still developing. And so because of that, they have a pouch. So the marsupials give birth to this 
slowly developing embryo that kind of crawls out into this pouch. And inside the pouch is where you're gonna have the nipples for lactation and for milk. And so you have this embryo that's developing in a pouch and drinking milk and growing inside this pouch area. Now, the weird thing is, they slowly develop and then they reach a point where they can leave the pouch. Their skin is now durable enough to uh, have UV rays hit it. They can now come out of the pouch, but sometimes they go out of the pouch and back in. And we see this with kangaroos. So they've reached an age where they're old enough to come out of the pouch, but they like to go back and forth because the nipples are in the pouch and this is where they get their milk. So a marsupial gives birth very, very early on in the embryo stage of its babies, and then they have to live in the pouch where they're protected and where they can nurse. And then the last group is the placental mammals. So these mammals are probably what you're used to. They are all over the world, placental mammals. They are pregnant with their babies in a placenta that encases the baby, protecting the baby, providing all the nutrients, liquids, vitamins, everything that the baby needs. And then the mom eventually gives birth to the baby and the baby is old enough to usually walk around. It can handle its environment. So unlike the marsupials that give birth to a really underdeveloped embryo, the placental mammals give birth to a fully developed baby. And so the placental mammals have really taken over because this strategy allows the moms to protect the baby and take care of it on the inside in the uterus while running around and gathering food and everything and then giving birth to a fully developed baby that is ready for the world. And so the placental mammals are pretty much everything that you think of when you think of mammal. You know, lions, tigers, horses, cows, elephants, all the monkeys, the great apes, all of us are placental mammals. The majority of marsupials are in Australia. The only monotremes are in Australia. And then the rest of the world is covered in placental mammals. Now, Australia, interestingly, does not have any native placental mammals. And that's because Australia broke off from India so long ago when mammals were all marsupials or monotremes. And so they've all stayed marsupials in Australia while the rest of the world evolved into the placental mammals. Okay, so in my next videos, I'm going to break down the different groups of placental mammals. But for this, I just wanted to break it down into those three groups, the monotremes that lay eggs, the platypus and the echidna, and then we have the marsupials, which have a pouch, so they give birth to not a fully developed embryo, and then they have to take care of it in a pouch or some form like that. And then the placental mammals, which have a placenta in the uterus, and they raise the baby until it's ready to be born fully developed. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.